Well, I think, too, the big blessing for me right now is that I got to endure all the bad things in my life mm -hmm. before I can win my title. You know, and right now I'm so focused on winning my title. Like, I put that before everything. Like, me, my job comes before everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, my wife's very supportive of everything I do. She's, she's my rock. And, you know, one thing I look at is that I've been through my down, my, my worst times in my life, I've been through. I've endured it. That's why nothing can break me. You know, like guys feel they can break me mentally. You know, I, I hear interviews like with the Jeremy Stevens fight. You know, he thought he was going to break me mentally. Oh, I'm going to mentally break Melvin, this and that. Man, it's just a fight. I'm a fighter. But I've been fighting all my life for everything I ever wanted. My parents never gave me anything. So I've always fought for what I wanted. And that's why I appreciate the things that I do have. So when fighters, you know, do interviews and be like, oh, well, Melvin's weak-minded. I'm going to break Melvin, this and that. That's fighters that don't know me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? People mm -hmm. that know me will look at that comment and be like, oh, man, this dude don't know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's what that's what gives me my drive, you know, especially when I know people don't really know me. And I think that's what happened with, like, the drug use and stuff like that, you know, because I always tell people there are three kinds of fans. They're the ones that really love you, so uh, they'll smell your jock strap if you wanted them to smell it. Then there's the ones that freaking hate you no matter what. They're going to hate mm -hmm. you, and they don't know why they hate you, but they do. And then there's the ones that's in the middle that will jump back and forth. When things are good, they're with you. When things go bad, they're against you. So, in life, I learned that about people in general, like not just fight fans, but people. People are that way because when I got popped for drug use, a lot of people, like Tito Ortiz, you know, he turned his back on me and dropped me from the sponsorship. Not that I really care because I never really cared for Tito like that. You know, I was mm -hmm. only training under Tito because of Salt Solis. So there was nothing that Tito could ever do for my career because obviously there's nothing he could do to help his own career. So, you know, I, I look back on that, and I just look at the little people and the people that turned their back on me, and I never I never got bitter or mad about it. I just was like, you know what? Cool. When I'm on that high horse and I'm holding that championship belt around my waist, I pray to God that I'm coming to me and say hi to me. Don't even, don't, even, don't even say hi to me. Just keep walking. Because when you turn your back on me at my worst, at the worst time of my life and at my lowest of my life, if you can't be there for me then, why should I want you to be there with me when I'm doing great and everything is going good? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I do. I do. So I'm, I'm guessing Tito didn't get a Christmas card this year. Man, I, Tito hasn't got anything for me ever. Like, I, I mean, you know, the one thing I do admire about Tito is the fact that Jenna was a sweetheart. Like, that woman treated me like a little brother. You know what I mean? She, she's golden, you know? And, you know, Tito just always had this chip on his shoulder. Like, you know, I guess you could say that, that, that um, Hunter to Peach bad boy type deal, you know? And, you know, that, that fit well with me when I was young and I was that same kind of bad boy coming out of New Orleans. But as I've grown up, you know, I realized, you know, I can still have my bad boy image in the cage, but outside of the cage, I want to conduct myself like an honorable young man. I want to be a man of integrity, and that's what I live by now. Like, you know, I can be one person in the cage, which I become somewhat different. So I tell people, don't judge me on what you see in the cage. What you see in the cage is me becoming someone else so that I can put myself in a position to, to, to win fights and beat guys and mentally break guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a mental, it, fighting is mental, more mental than it is physical. And I want people to understand that. And when I'm outside of the ring, you know, like this year, my, me and my wife are starting a foundation for kids with cerebral palsy, um, right. because the staff sergeant Chris Molina, who I'm staying with now, his young daughter Victoria has cerebral palsy, and I'm starting a foundation with, um, based off of her name, you know, it's going to be honored by her. And, you know, that's the things I want to do. I want to be humanitarian. I want to give back. And, you know, when people start to see the real Melvin, then people can judge me. If someone don't know the real me, then they shouldn't open their mouth about, you know, trying to down talk me because a lot of people don't get to see the things that I do for people. So, Melvin, it almost sounds like when you look at Tito, like you connected, like when you were in that phase, you kind of connected with that, but it almost sounds like you feel like you've grown out of that phase to be more mature, and he hasn't, even though he's significantly older than you. Right. I mean, but you know what? I tell everybody that you don't have to be a certain age to be mature. I mean, I've been, been, been around a fight game 15 years professionally, and, I mean, I was 16, 17 years old fighting in strip clubs. I was going to strip clubs. I was going to casinos. I grew up fast, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, just being around older people, period. Like, I'm around – everybody I'm around is older than me. 
no matter what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm part of a cigar club out, out of Houston it's called Serious Cigars, and I'm also uh, I also hang out here at my at Monty's up here in, um, in Albuquerque. And what people don't understand is. I go around these older people for knowledge. I go around these older people to hear the things they went through back when their life was around when they were young, you know what I mean, way before my time. And when you take the time out to do that as a young guy like me, then you, you learn more. And I just, you know, I, I, guess, I just feel it's not about wanting to be better than the next but it's just about me learning something that's going to get me forward in life. I want to be able to progress. I don't want to always be the guy that people look at as a loser or or, I, or has been. You know what I mean? Because, you know, me personally, you know, I'll go back to the whole Tito thing. You know what I mean? Like, he's one of those guys that he never evolved, but, yeah, he feel like everybody owes him something. You know what I mean? And guys like him get paid 500000 600000 maybe more dollars when they still the same fighter they was 15 years ago. But you got guys like me that's involved and that's getting better fight after fight, and I'm still feeling underpaid at times. You know what I mean? Like, I feel a lot of guys are, are like, you know, even with Kimbo. Kimbo Slice came into the game, you know what I'm saying? 500 grand for a first fight. You know what I mean? This dude was a freaking uh, uh, fucking... But what, internet superstar? You know, right. I say, I told people from the beginning he didn't deserve to be in the UFC. Dana did that just to prove a point, and I'm not mad about that. You know, he proved the point, and now his whole career is, is gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, when guys like that are jumping in the game right away and getting money that I feel I deserve because I've been in this sport for 15 years, you know, that bothers me. 